Despite the early success of ONAP, there are still some telcos who are critical about the stability, usability and production readiness of ONAP. Ling Lee, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Um, you are um, been closely involved with ONAP. China Mobile itself is, is very um, closely involved and a big supporter of ONAP. Why do you think certain telcos are, are, are critical at the moment of, of, of the stage where, where ONAP is and its, and its suitability? I would like to say um, ONAP is a platform which we all believe that will enable next generation network transformation. And having said that, uh, you know, it is an open source community, but it does not mean that we have to take, you know, the source code out of it and make it as, you know, product. So the value of this platform, we see it actually composed of three layers. The first one is the reference architecture, the concept of design time, runtime, model driven approach, and also closed loop automation. Those concepts are contributions from ONAP, this community, to the industry. And it is now well understood and communicated. And people everywhere, they are communicating their ideas, their visionaries about network, next generation operating system with those terms. So we are architecturally aligned with this reference architecture. Um, this is the key value. I see that Open, ONAP has been very successfully contributing. And the other part is actually you know, more about interoperability. And because there's so much modules inside ONAP, and there are even more third-party components that need to plug in with ONAP to form an end-to-end -end network automation. So between these modules, there needs to be standards or specifications of workflows, interfaces, models, etc. So those needs to be stabled and documented before those components to be interoperable, working together. So the reference specification is another value that this community could deliver to the industry. And we, China Mobile, has been working with our partners alongside with other service providers to push hard to try to achieve alignment between this community and third parties, standards development organizations who are delivering specifications. So we are working together to deliver such value. And the third level is actually the source code level. And um, if the code base is mature enough, um, people would always leverage that and incubate their own product, which is the approach that we are recently started exploring. Uh, we are picked you know, certain modules from ONAP, Beijing release, and trying to you know, do something uh, with our own development team. And we are conducting trials, I think, starting from September to November um, in Zhejiang province in China. And we're also looking at other use cases now. I guess maybe one of the reasons behind a lot of frustration is that it has been successful and it does set out to achieve a lot. And obviously, telcos really need this. So is it a case of we're going as fast as we can, we just need a bit more time, or is it a case of let's so focus more on getting something that is more production ready now. And it's, it, and it's this part of the evolutionary roadmap from Beijing, Casablanca and onwards. Perhaps it depends. Um, each service provider or vendor has its own status strategy. Uh, whether or not you leverage community source code to incubate your product, uh, which means that it has to be production ready by itself or you would take that as a reference architecture or reference specification suite that you will enable your product to be interpretable with uh, the reference implementation or other third-party solutions to accelerate the, the transformation without having to wait for the maturity of the source code. That's two different like approaches. So where are we today? What has Zona achieved right now? Where, 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 where is it heading? Perhaps a recent consensus from, from our side, our experience is that it is a very huge code base and it takes time and also people, procedure transformation to have it as a whole to replace what we already have. So perhaps we could take, you know, like divide and conquer approach. So we divide it into different modules 
and you know use our prioritized use case as a trigger to perhaps plug in some of the modules which are mature you know and also targeted at the specific use case we're addressing our business requirements to like gain a sense of incremental deployment and also allow time for the rest of the code base to get mature. Can I move on to um, a fascinating project that China Mobile is doing, the, the, the Novanet project. Can you, you're involved in this as well. Um, can, can you explain more about what Novanet set out to achieve? Sure. Uh, Novanet is a, um, in fact the brand name for our vision of the next generation network. And um, there are actually, I think, um, three sub-projects under the umbrella of Novanet. The first one is doing the high-level overall architectural design. And the other is actually setting up a trial network nationwide to try all these innovative, you know, like technologies or solutions together. And the third one is actually our R&D department doing an ONAP cloud OS and SDN controllers, those you know, like self-developed products or software management products are under this a third project, so which is uh, doing something that we call um, incubated product lines. So that would be part of, you know, shifted to the trial network sub-project. So knowing that is umbrella and all those like uh, new technologies about network transformation is underneath it. How important is the whole concept of open networking um, and the em embracing open source and open methodologies to China Mobile? Is, is, this, is this the future? Is it, will it coexist with more proprietary legacy approaches we've seen in the past? The key for, for success, you know, like service providers that like China Mobile, we always do business with our partners. And I think it is also true in open source communities that you creating new value rather than you know eating up what you know others value. So it is important that we work with our partners. Um, open networking does not mean that we will leverage open source or do it all by ourselves. It means collaborating with our partners to accelerate innovation. And um, I would turn to take open source as a, another, you know, like standards. Um, in standards, you know, we do, how can I put it, common features. And we always allow vendors to have their differentiating uh, features over that. Otherwise, you know, um, how can we play together? Is there still scope for this community that, to focus more on specifically telco needs? I mean, historically, we've, we've embraced the, uh, the web scale companies and enterprises. Do the telcos themselves have more particular requirements that maybe the community needs to, to, to focus on? Perhaps so, but you know, um, I think it, now we're in a more early stage at you know, like demonstrating the functionality rather than you know, tackling very deeply in realistic application scenarios. So probably so, uh, when we are looking at more like edge scenarios or 5G use cases, which would be, I think, part of our upcoming release. So we'll see. Great. Well, Lin thank you very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you, Gil.